thank you. Uh, thank you for organizing this session. So um, I'm going to approach, let's say, landscape, the problem of landscape uh, by the point of view of a pottery specialist. But I'm not going to show many pottery, so <laughs> feel lucky <laughs> about this. Um, so the third millennium BC is an epoch characterized by the presence of large scale and ideologically motivated interactive networks that spread over Europe and beyond. So these networks were expressed materially by complex archaeological assemblages in which various traits and practices are distributed, of course, over extended areas. And the so-called Adriatic Cetina phenomenon, a complex pattern of short and long-range intertwined interactions that characterizes the central Mediterranean in the third millennium BC, is of course one of these. So the main characteristic of this uh, so-called Cetina culture, uh, which has its core in central Dalmatia between uh, Shibenik and Split area, is the presence of a huge number of tumuli, often grouped in clusters under which different types of burials are placed single or multiple inhumation, mostly in stone cysts or without any funerary architecture. So grave goods are rare, almost non-existent, uh, but they take form of ceramic, uh, broken and scattered throughout the tumulus. Um, distinctive Cetina ceramics include, but are not limited to, of course, bowl with uh, tick and a dream and uh, different types of uh, tankards or beakers. Uh, one of the most, uh, let's say, famous in the literature is the so-called Cotterats type from a pan close to Sarajevo. So the mobility of these Dalm Dalmatian Cetina communities is postulated by the presence of these very distinct ceramic types across the Balkans, especially, and most important for us today, across the central Mediterranean. <laughs> so you have um, distribution maps uh, indicating this, this, this spread of the Cetina evidences. So I'm going to approach uh, the Cetina phenomenon from the point of view of the resources and their appropriation and the consequent construction of different landscapes, which I call the Cetina scapes, emphasizing the cultural and symbolic dimension. As I said before, most of the conclusion that you are going to see here are uh, based uh, on uh, uh, ceramic analysis, but not only, of course. So in contrast to natural raw materials, resources as are socially productive construction, expressing what people perceive as relevant for their life, no matter if it is about their physical or their social needs. Resources are regarded as a product of social appropriation and construction first, either as material sources, but also as mental perceptions. Such an approach allows to specifically access to societal transformation and also to evaluate resources' impact to societal change in general, and to understand the construction of these materialized environments. Archaeological record, uh, as I pointed out already, suggests that Cetina communities were fairly mobile human groups who created their landscape by projecting their ideas and views on the world as they find it, <laughs> putting emphasis on trail, tracks, routes, campsites, and special places, so arenas. Uh, in his lifelong work uh, in the Shibenik split area, as I mentioned, the core of this uh, so-called Cetina culture or Cetina phenomenon, Marovic excavated an impressive number of tumuli concentrated in the upper part of the Cetina Valley. His research was undertaken at a very local scale. However, he was the first to recognize the presence at the La Terza Ten Cemetery in the 1970s uh, of these uh, special tankards, uh, transadriatic tankards of Cetina type, so acknowledging the importance of transadriatic connections, so the connections between Italy and uh, uh, Eastern Adriatic. Uh, by adopting a cultural history approach, Blago e Govedarica researched the Cetina culture at a wider scale, so encompassing the whole territory of uh, former Yugoslavia and Albania, and part putting particular emphasis on overland connections. 
However, it's only with the 90s, um, which uh, were characterized by the flourishing of Mediterranean archaeology, that the research scale uh, on the Cetina phenomenon became wider, encompassing those, the entire Central Mediterranean and Greece, and emphasizing especially Trans-Adriatic and Trans-Union connection, especially thanks to new excavation in Italy that yielded the great numbers of Cetina evidences. Um, on the other hand, however, this interest for these uh, big narratives um, and for, for seaborn uh, uh, nature of the Cetina phenomenon resulted in the almost complete neglect of inland connectivity. So the current interpretative model for the Cetina phenomenon <laughs> emphasizes only seaborn connectivity and, of course, these caves. The main, the main hypothesis on the nature of the Cetina networks can be summarized more or less as follows. So the spread of Cetina features to Western Greece, Southern Italy, Sicily, the Maltese archipelago can be regarded as a fairly homogeneous and single pattern of uh, connectivity that took place at the very end of the third millennium BC, in which a pivotal role was played by the so-called, what uh, uh, Maran called the Argonauts of the Western Balkans, who spread over the central <coughs> Mediterranean. According to Maran, which was followed by Bruden, Cetina is the common denominator behind the migration of small groups on the move from Dalmatia that are connected to the circulation of metals. However, according to Rick and Cazzella, the phenomenon began pretty earlier, about the mid of the third millennium BC, and of course, Balkan and Adriatic Sepharer were not the only player in the Cetina phenomenon. So Adriatic Seafarer, so this uh, phenomenon of connectivity which have the, its core in Dalmatia, is only one phase of a more nuanced and complex socioeconomic and cultural network. So, um, as we saw, resource getting strategies and commerce connected to metallurgy are generally indicated as the main driving forces behind this overseas expansion of the Cetina phenomenon. However, the data at our disposal show that the Cetina phenomenon is a far more complex pattern of connectivity and mobility in which resources getting strategies was deeply intertwined to ideological and social aspects. And this especially to the research uh, uh, undertaken by Forenbacher in uh, Palagruja and in, Dal in Dalmatia, which, are, uh, which were recently published. So in the last uh, year, I would say, we have uh, really a huge uh, number of new data to address uh, uh, the uh, already um, established model. So, um, as regards overseas expansion, recent research by Foreign Bahron, Palagruja, and Atna Kovana allows us to consider and uh, reconsider these evidences connected to Cetina expansion. Palagruja is a very tiny <laughs> islet <laughs> um, between Italy and Dalmatia. Uh, and represents a key site by which to address the significance of Adriatic Union seafaring and seascapes constructions. Lacking all basic resources, such as water and fuel, and therefore being unsuitable for a permanent settlement, the islet was used as outpost for the Gargano Church <coughs> supply network. Analysis show that the abundant lithics found at Palagruja are of Apulian origin, with 97,5% of those recovered made with the church from Gargano. Data from the uh, Spila Cave and the Hill Fort of Grad, both located on the Nakovana Plateau on Pelechats, a peninsula on the eastern Adriatic seaboard, seaboard of southern Croatia, provided crucial information about raw material supplies. From the early Neolithic right up to the Iron Age, virtually all the Nakovana Plateau lithics are made of cherts imported from the Gargano Peninsula. Cert trade from Gargano to Dalmatia was a flourishing activity, and set in expansion took advantage of already <coughs> existing and persistent trans-Adriatic connections ongoing from the Neolithic. However, it can be noticed that Palagruja increased in importance as a seaport during the third millennium BC, becoming a stop uh, on a widely traveled route. As mentioned earlier, the large majority of pottery from funerary context is very richly decorated, and it is usually found broken and scattered throughout 
our tumuli. Preference for the use of decorated pottery in ritual activities is suggested by find on Palagruja, um, where a good number of Cetina pot shirt was recovered together with highly symbolic objects connected to Belvigar ideology, such as stone wrist guards and flint arrowheads. This finds suggests that the islet was not only a simple trade outpost, but that it occupied a significant place in ritual activities connected to the raw material supply and seafaring. Cetina ceramics found at Palagruja were likely manufactured elsewhere and brought to the islet together with animals, water, and other goods during expeditions. The first set of petrographic analysis av available for Dalmatia, um, undertaken on setting a pot shirt, suggests that they were possibly, of course, manufactured, especially for activities connected to burials and rituals. So in other words, they were manufactured to be broken. Um, this is particularly evident when we compare, of course, ceramic from funerary context and uh, um, ceramic from settlement. So Cetina ceramics from funerary context and recovered at Palagruja, of course, both are of worst quality. The presence, uh, so let's keep from the Adriatic on the other side of the Cetina expansion, that is the Central Balkans. The presence of Cetina material in the interior of the Balkans, Bosnia and Western Serbia, is well known since decades, uh, as pottery with Cetina features has been recovered in several, in several tumuli and hill forts. Available evidence suggests that the spread of Cetina features in the Balkan interior embeds processes of transculturation, that is the adoption of cultural practices and their social cultural recontextualization, in the sense that material like objects and tools and immaterial culture, rituals and technologies are generally not just simply imported or copied in block, but they, that, that they instead appear as the result of negotiations, which thereby permit these features to enter diverse social and cultural environments. This process can be well observed in ceramic, which represents the most abundant and peculiar archaeological evidence for the Cetina phenomenon. For example, this is just one among many, <laughs> some vessels from the Cetina tumuli in Dalmatia recall double-handled beakers, which are widely spread within the Armenohori communities. So the so-called Armenohori-type cantaros, um, which in the mission context, contrary to what we can observe in Armenohori, are decorated with typical Cetina patterns. Phenomena of transculturation in pottery production, production can be observed also in Greece, especially in the known, very well-known site of Olympia. Um, the Olympia material indeed reveals extensive interaction within groups with different technological traditions. And I have to say that actually all this uh, um, research project, which is focusing more on Cetina, but also on other uh, cultural groups in the Balkans, show that transculturation in pottery production was extremely, um, uh, an extremely important uh, feature. Um, and then characterized the relationship of several groups from the Pannonian plan to Greece. Um, from this overview, it is clear that Cetina is a complex pheno phenomenon in which both seaboard and overland connectivity played relevant but different roles in the construction of different Cetina scapes. Cetina seaboard mobility and resource getting strategy, as we can observe in Palagruja, was associated with objects having high symbolic value connected to ceremonial warfare. Risk guards are also, also known from a good number of Cetina sites in Dalmatia. In the wider neighborhood of the Eastern Adriatic, such risk guards appear in that bigger context in Northern Italy, Toscana and Lazio, as well as Sicily and Sardinia. In addressing early Cycladic archaeology, Broodbank suggests that the existence of a certain association between the use of long boats and the development of a warrior and male-centered ideology, in which the use an ostentatious display of weapons had a significant role. Given the importance of overseas connection for Cetina communities in resource acquiring strategies and their association with the bad beaker paraphernalia, it is possible to hypothesize that traveling the Sushats Pelagruja Gargan route to get to the church from Italy was also considered as a means to increase social prestige. During the second half of the third millennium BC, 
Palagruja acquired uh, importance, moving so from being a simple stopover uh, and a seaport was, uh, was used in the chart trade to becoming a proper ritual place where different ritual activities connected with the journey to Italy took place. Interaction patterns of Cetina communities in the Balkans and in Greece, on the contrary, seem to have been characterized by marked transculturation processes that hint at a long-lasting and frequent contacts between neighboring communities, which in some cases even shared the same areas, as we saw, for example, in Bosnia, where uh, Cetina tumuli are uh, close to Pelotis, Pelotis della Cerqua evidences. These relations, yes. um, these relations place less emphasis on the material than Beaker ideology and point reader to at at least partially shared symbolic language. Um, together with the spread of typical pottery types, uh, the Cetina phenomenon is also characterized by the emergence of different cultural landscapes expressed physically by the diffusion of burial mounds throughout eastern Adriatic and Ionian areas. This can be observed in the northernmost and southernmost peripheries of the Cetina phenomenon, that is, in northern Italy and particularly in Greece, <laughs> where the diffusion of tumuli occurred at the same time where the, when the diffusion of the Cetina features reached its peak. So the notion that uh, prehistoric social landscapes were divided into territorial blocks occupied by distinctive archaeological culture is recurring in archaeology. However, anthropological research uh, proves that many ancient landscapes were more politically and ethnically continuous than discontinuous. In this latter approach, the food social landscape in the third millennium BC, with their mobility and migration, a term here meant in its basic definition of a one-way residential relocation to a different physical or perceived environment, but this one individual, were not a single event, but an ongoing process. So both material and immaterial resources played a role in the spread of Cetina features by means of both seaboard and overland mobility at the end of the third millennium BC and in the construction of different and intertwined Cetina scapes across the Mediterranean and the Balkans. Thank you for your attention and thanks to these colleagues uh, with all my working with. <laughs> thanks.